It all ended yesterday. I didn't wake up in the morning realizing that it was going to be the day that I finished until I looked at my email inbox and saw that it was empty, looked at my to-do list and saw that everything was done and realized that I had finished all of my projects, even the tiny ones. And I sat back and thought for a moment, did I just finish? the Learn Reading program. It took five years and yesterday, May 2nd, I finished. Well, we finished because this is a story about God and me. <laughs> Mostly God. In the very beginning, I took a lot of notes every day about what I was doing, what I was feeling, what I was experiencing. And so I looked back this morning in my notes and I saw that the day that I said the words, I can't not, and I'll tell you that story in a second, was May 2nd, 2019. It's exactly five years to the day that I thought of the words, I can't not. And then yesterday was May 2nd, and I thought of the words, I couldn't not. But they weren't from me, they were from God. Okay, let me tell you as much as I can remember. Back on May 2nd, 2019, I was watching YouTube videos of what adults had as far as reading instruction. I just was wondering if, if an adult who didn't know how to read or wanted to improve their reading skills went to YouTube, what would they find? And what I saw shocked me is an understatement. I was more than shocked. I was mortified by what they had. I'm not a crier, but I went in and told my husband about it. I said, all they have is stuff for babies and what they have that might not insult their intelligence is bad it's not good instruction and that was the day that the thought came into my mind that i from all of my experience over 30 years of teaching reading i thought in my mind i can't not do something and that's the day that learn reading was born i remember praying about it and presenting this idea to god because it was kind of a big deal if I was going to come up with a new curriculum, which interestingly enough, my husband planted that seed in my mind just a few days before when I was unhappy with the reading curriculum that I was using. My husband said, well, why don't you just make one of your own? And I just laughed it off. Of course, who, who develops a reading curriculum? Even if you're a reading specialist, that's, it's like it's already been done. How can it, how can you reinvent the wheel? Why would you want to? Anyway, I just kind of laughed it off. But on May 2nd, I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to develop a reading curriculum and it's not going to insult the intelligence of the older learner. So I prayed about it and I'll, I'll never forget the impression that I received. It was these words, you're going to need some tools. I didn't really know what that meant. I'm still not quite sure what that meant, but I do know that God provided me everything that I needed to to develop the curriculum, which was much better than I could have could have come up with on my own. And all of the th all of the people that have been placed in my path since then, what they have taught me, all of the tools that I've been given were from God. Right after I decided to develop the curriculum, I started getting insomnia. And so I was up all night just thinking, like, how, where do I start? So I just did a lot of research and at one point I found a research study that was done in England that broke down all of the sounds and letters and their frequency in English print. And so that sparked something in my mind that I want to develop a curriculum that introduces letters and sounds in the order that they appear in everyday English print so that when the learner begins to read, they can read in the real world quickly. So I started getting excited. And soon the Learn Reading program was taking shape, only it didn't have a name yet. I had no idea what the name was. But the curriculum was starting to develop. It went through a lot of bad drafts. I remember I was, uh, I was working as a dyslexia specialist at the time and had students one-on-one. -on -one, and I remember having a rough draft of the program and after using it on a couple students, after they went home, I went into the family room where my husband was and I just sat there and I said, it's boring. 
it's too boring and I was really sad that all of that work was it was dull so I went back to the drawing board to try to see what I could do to make it a little bit more engaging and exciting for the learner then I remember as I was working with those students one of them was super dyslexic probably the most severely dyslexic student I've had and I've had hundreds of them over the last couple decades it wasn't until I put a pencil in her hand and had her dot each sound before she attempted to read the word and then connecting those dots that something clicked for her and for me and that's when pencil reading was born I know it's not a new idea but it was a new idea for me and then more things started to develop because they needed to know what those vowels said before they went to go pencil read because otherwise they would just guess and that defeats the purpose and then the vowel placement strategy was born and i started seeing all of well i had been working as a reading specialist for 30 years and i had already seen what the, the what the patterns were in words but i did a deep dive and i really searched and found what so many some even undiscovered reading rules i think i mean i've never heard of them before it started coming to my mind and then the vowel placement strategy was developed so that they could know exactly what a vowel would say based on where it said on the word and the letters that surrounded it so that when they went to go and pencil read they would know what each letter says including those nasty little vowels then when you go and combine those sounds you can read with confidence so something clicked for her something clicked for me and then another thing since she was so severely dyslexic i asked her you know what would you it just illustrate what we are reading about and her eyes lit up because she was a, an amazing artist i wish i had some of her drawings exceptionally gifted which most dyslexics are in areas that center in that part of the brain so then she was able to go back and read the sentence with new eyes with a goal of wanting to illustrate all of the little details in there and so adding her gifts and strengths and talents to the lesson helped her immensely now she was engaging more parts of her brain she was enjoying reading so that she could illustrate what was happening and the learn reading program became a little less boring and so then i started incorporating other things other talents and strengths that other dyslexic learners might have like some people some of them are really gifted with verbalizing and expression so sometimes they would just want to describe to me what all the details were in their mind or some of them are just natural thespians and they want to get get up and act out what's happening in the sentence and all of a sudden it became a lot less boring and i was getting a lot more excited and then i remember being really excited also when the give a goal strategy started to take shape I wanted the student to be more of the teacher to be able to correct their own mistakes and less reliant on me or any teacher or their parent. So I started pointing out if they made an error, what the error was, and then just stopped talking. And they would go back and reread the word, focusing on that point in the word and be able to correct their own mistakes without me. And the give a goal strategy was born. So that if they miss a word, we don't tell them the word, we tell them the error and let them read the word fix the word which is when reading really happens when you really identify what every single sound is in the word in the right sequence and come up with the word on your own it was all getting really exciting so i was up at night developing the curriculum and i had all sorts of notes that i was taking to my i was kind of trying not to think about the program while I was teaching my own students even though it was hard but I didn't want my mind to wander I wanted to focus on them but the two were coalescing really well but when I was done teaching and I was all focused on the program I remember wearing tennis shoes because wherever I was in the house I would get an idea run to my office and write it down and I was running back and forth all day long and that wasn't me these ideas they are not me i'm not that smart i'm not that good these ideas i believe were from god so i wore tennis shoes to run to write down the impressions as soon as they came stacks and stacks of sticky notes and index cards and papers i have them all saved it was probably the closest that i have ever felt to god it was during those 
first few months of developing the program. I felt that his hand was in it. I was receiving these personal impressions that were so beautiful. I knew that they weren't mine. And I felt that connection so much. I will always treasure that closeness and close time that I had with God. I still have a closeness with God, but that was special. So some of my sleepless nights were now devoted to, okay, well, what, how do I get this reading curriculum into the hands of anybody who might want it? So I started watching a lot of YouTube at night and learning about online courses and different platforms that can host online courses and how to promote online courses and how to have a YouTube channel. And then all of the little details like, do I need a camera? Do I need lights? How do I take money? Do I need a bank account? All of these little details were running through my mind all of the time as I was developing the program. And it was exciting. I was so excited. Anybody that would ask me, so how are you? What's new? I would tell them, I'm developing a, re I'm developing a reading curriculum. And it's, it's crazy cool. Who would have thought? Anyway, I remember the day that I finished the curriculum. I had, all, I had a big sliding glass door in the back of the house that spanned three windows, floor to ceiling. And I had nine by 11 pieces of paper with the letter and sound that they are learning with each lesson taped to the sliding glass door in order, trying to make sure that everything was in the right order that I had because I wanted to have it a nice round number at 80. So I would have to leave some things off. And initially it was 81, but I thought, I don't know, I'll just make it 80. Anyway, so trying to figure out what those last few lessons were going to be, what I was going to include, standing back, looking at it all on the sliding glass door and realizing it's done. It's ready and it's really good really so much better than I could have done on my own. So then I started entering all of the curriculum into the online online course platform that I had chosen, got myself a bank account, got a business license, got all registered, got all the permits I needed and started creating the course and started uploading the course into the system. At this point, it was early 2020. So it had taken me a good solid nine months at least to develop the program. And while I was uploading the curriculum into the, the online platform, I was also working on other things. I, I had hired a, an author to create a bunch of books for me, supplemental readers that had short stories in them with controlled vocabulary, with controlled text that went along with every single lesson so that the learner could have supplemental materials that would not trigger guessing so that every word in those stories follows the rules that they had learned to that point. So I had hired an author and we were working on that together. I would give her the words and she would craft them into stories. I had also hired uh, an assistant to help me with the layout of the program, the layout of the lessons and to get all of those documents so that I could enter them on the computer. I had hired an editor to help me with my website. I was working on professional boxed game cards that included the words so that they could have, so that the learner could have um, durable cards to, to play games and activities with to promote fluency. I was, I hired a photographer to take some professional photos and I found a name <laughs> after a lot of, a lot of thought. I was, I couldn't figure out a name of the program. That was really, really hard. Then one morning as I was praying, I thought of Learn Reading. I checked to see if the website was available and it was, and I bought it in a heartbeat. That's what went on the bank account. That's what went on the website. That's going on all of the cards and all the papers and all the documents now. The things were just starting to come together when the pandemic hit. I would say it was about half done. Well, as far as entered in and ready, ready for the user to actually use when everything shut down and everybody's worlds changed. All of the kids came home from school and I was listening to parents struggle with helping them at home. And at that point I had had 
a really good beta tester response. I posted in a Facebook group that I was developing this curriculum and wanted some beta users to actually go to the online platform and test it out and see if all of these lessons actually work. I was having a lot of positive response from, from those betas, that everything was good and they loved it. They were sending me testimonials and it occurred to me about that I could, I could, I could launch this now. It's not all the way ready, but I, I might be ready enough. All of the kids came home from school. Parents were in a desperate situation. I'm not going to lie. I felt ooh, apprehensive about launching a business a week after the pandemic hit because I didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything that was cause for celebration when everybody was struggling and people were sick and lives were falling apart. I didn't want to say, Hey, I just launched this new program in the middle of all of this sadness, but I did feel like it was the right time. So I launched it quietly and it shot through the roof immediately. The sales of the program the, for the first few months were much more than anything I expected. So I finished the program really fast, hired a few more people to help me, and then just kind of went into support mode for a little while. After users had been using the program for a few months and summer had gone by and maybe the fall of 2020, I was having some, oh, some more ideas that I wanted to implement. Soon the preschool packet was born, the begin reading packet was born, decodables was born, and I wanted an adult class. I had never forgotten the original reason why I wanted to create Learn Reading. The whole program is dedicated to them. And now that things were going, parents were having a lot of success with it. Children were having a lot of success with it, but where were my adults? They are why I started the whole thing in the first place. How can I reach them? I thought, well, I found them on YouTube in the first place. Maybe that's where I'll find them again. So I created a reading intensive workshop course in the very beginning, which was dedicated to the adult non-reader. It's a two week course that was just teaching them the very, very beginning, teaching them the word the, teaching them what the letters say. Launched ads to it and nobody bought it. It was a flop. <laughs> then I tried, I remember I tried a kickstart, a kickstart program where I was asking for help to somehow get this program to these adults. And I worked a long time on how to develop a good Kickstarter and made all these videos for it, launched it, and nobody donated. Not one person I know donated. Right before I, right before I closed it, one random guy gave me $50. Hello to you if you're watching this. So I didn't know what to do. So I made it a matter of prayer and I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We go, we love going to the temple, at least I do. And as I was praying about it, I was in the temple a lot. I did the laundry in the temple. And so I was in the laundry room all by myself with the dryers humming, just folding the towels. And every week when I would go, it would just be me, the quiet and God. And every time I was in there, I would get more sticky note ideas and they would just come flooding in on a new curriculum that I could provide for adults in addition to what I already had because it was also appropriate for adults. But this new one included me teaching them like I've always wanted to. It included only nonsense words so they wouldn't rely on any previous memory of any words. And I was getting excited again as I was jotting down these notes saying, oh, that's so good, oh, that's so good, thank you. And eventually all of those little weeks of sticky notes added up to the current adult class that I have now, which is my treasure. They have my heart and they know it. I tried to make that class as affordable as possible. It started out as $100 for a month for twice a week lessons. And then I it would kill me when people say that they can't afford it. So then I dropped it to $49 a month that it currently is now, which is, a, it's a pretty good deal. 
but I know also that it's still unaffordable for a lot of people. So I went to YouTube, back to YouTube, and made a bunch, a hundred videos teaching them to read for free. So my adults were coming and I was connecting with them. And it came full circle because in the beginning, I remember praying, asking, just pouring on my heart, just saying that these are adults that can't read. They can't read an email. They can't read a prescription bottle. They can't read the Bible. And I wanted them to be able to read. I wanted them to be able to read the Bible. I remember creating at the very end of that adult class curriculum, there was a, a, a mastery list of passages. And I would give the students an option. Would you like to read passages of Shakespeare? Or would you like to read passages of Isaiah? And I gave them the option. And they loved applying what they were learning from those nonsense words to difficult language, challenging writing. Shakespeare and Isaiah are not easy. And watching them come full circle to not being able to read, to being able to read Shakespeare and Isaiah. Now this has brought me to where I am now. Yesterday, I just decided to give the adult class um, a month for free, just from now on. I don't see me ever changing that. I, I, I want to reduce the barriers to people who just want to learn to read. And then it all occurred to me that on the day that I made that adult class free for a month, was the day I closed my laptop after having finished all of my emails, after having completed all of my tasks, after having accomplished all of my little projects, even down to the little details, fine tuning all the sales pages and making sure all the email sequences were the way I wanted them. All of that was done and finished yesterday. And yesterday was May 2nd, the day that Learn Reading was born in my mind five years ago. And I kneeled down and prayed a lot of thank yous. I went over five years worth of thank yous, five years worth of tools. Thank you for this person. Thank you for this person. Thank you for helping me think of that and helping me think of that and for my adults, and for all my little kids that are now getting the kind of help that they need. Thank you for the book. I have a book. What? All of these thank yous. And then the thought from God came into my mind that said, I couldn't not. 